So what the Lord was saying that the gates of hell or the kingdom of hell shall not prove to be more powerful than my kingdom. That's right. The That's right. gates of hell shall not be victorious. Right. The right. gates of hell shall not have greater power than the kingdom of God. Now, this is so important for the Lord to declare and to specify. Because even though the gates of hell would not prevail, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't try. Nope. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't wage an attempt to try and topple down the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't mean that when Peter came on the day of Pentecost and began to preach and, and to uh, touch the lame man and made him walk, it didn't mean that the Pharisees weren't going to come and try and threaten them. In fact, that's exactly when Peter and John declared the greatness of God and declared the miracle that the Lord had worked through them. The Pharisees and the leaders of, of the temple came and tried to, uh, tried to threaten them. Tell them not to speak in Jesus' name. Tell them tried to shut them up. Tell, tried to take away their authority. But you see, the thing about authority is the only person that can take away the authority that you've been given is the one who's given you the authority. Right. See, no one else can come and take away the authority that, that the one who has given you has empowered you with. Mm. Why? Because even in that same time, the, the, these priests or the, the captain of the, of the temple, they said, they thought that they were in the right. They thought that they knew what was happening. They knew what should be happening and what to do. But yet these ones who were supposed to be in control. They were the ones who were trying to stop their authority. They were trying to stop them. For the gates of hell will use anyone that makes themselves available to be used That's to try right. and bring down the kingdom. That's right. And when it seemed like shutting them up didn't work, then they moved to stoning them. Yes. They tried to kill them. Figure if like, we can't get them, we can't scare them, then why don't we just kill them and sh shut them up altogether? Right. But the more that they tried to persecute the church, yes. the more people heard of the gospel, the more they heard what was happening, right. and the more they believed. From that same time, it said that how be it, many of them which heard the word believed. They tried to shut Peter and John up. They threw them into prison and put them in hold. But they, the people believed. They heard and they believed. For the gates of hell will always try to attack. And when it seems that the attack is working, they will mount attack. But to, I'm here to tell you today that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the violent take it by force. But you see, it's one thing to enter into battle that you you don't think you'll win. But the Lord has declared that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of heaven. Right. So that means that you have the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Though the gates of heaven might, though hell may try to rage against you, though the enemy may wage an attack and try to shut you up, right. he can't win. That's right. We heard this morning that you've got to be willing to die for this gospel, to die up to yourself. Yes. And even so much, give your life if that's what it should take. Why? Because even if so, even if the gates of hell try to shut you up, you know that they can't kill the spirit that's, that's with you. Right. But the Bible says not to fear a man that can kill the body, but kill the body and cast a soul into hell. That's what you should fear. But when you're in the kingdom of heaven, there's no need to worry because you know that the gates of hell cannot prevail. That's right. Stand with me this morning. Peter had the authority and the boldness to preach the word. But you see, Peter didn't care about what the priests and the temple leaders said. He didn't care about their efforts to shut them up or to silence him. He didn't care that they had thrown him into prison and desired to kill him. And it wasn't because he was arrogant, but because he knew by which authority he preached. He knew by which power he performed these miracles of healing. Because he knew that it wasn't him, but it was a Christ that was in him. It was a Christ that had filled his vessel on the day of Pentecost. The Lord had entrusted him with the keys, and he wasn't about to allow the enemy to deter him from his path. Right. So for us, if we are in the kingdom, the Lord has entrusted us with the keys. Yes. He's entrusted us with the power and the authority to open the door for men to come into the kingdom. And no matter how much the enemy may rage, how much the enemy may try and shut us up, we know that he cannot be victorious. For the Bible says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Right. And all those that rise up against us, we shall condemn. Yes, the right. judgment shall be condemned. But we've got to go out. If we have the authority, we can't sit in glass houses and sit in church houses and, and be content to be in the kingdom. For then we block the entranceway. There's a Bible study that was given a while ago, I'll never forget, it was called Heaven's Embassy. 
We are the ambassadors, for we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. But we are here to minister to people, to give them access. For an ambassador, his job is to grab people access to the country. He lives in, 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 a, in a separate country from his homeland, but he's there, and that piece of land that he occupies, that piece of land on which the embassy is found, belongs to the host kingdom. Right. For instance, if you are going to the American embassy downtown here, that land, when you step into those gates past the guards with the two big guns, you're stepping on American soil. That's right. So when we are opening up the kingdom, when we take those keys and we open up the door to those who are on the outside, we're giving men access to heaven. Mm -hmm. Giving men access to heavenly places. How dare we stand in the way and keep silent the authority that the Lord has given us to open up the doors for men who are seeking a better life. For we are many came to this country seeking for a better life in the natural. But how much more are we not to obstruct the way to those who are seeking a better life, a, a, an eternal life. One that will last beyond the confines of this world. The Lord has given us access with the Holy Ghost. He's given us the keys just like he gave them to Peter that day. But if we have not to the Holy Ghost, if we have not the keys, then there's still some learning that must be done. There's still some forming that must be done. There's still seeking that must be done to seek after him so that Christ can be formed in us so that we too can have that authority, so that we too can have that power to be able to open up the gate. Yes. The gatekeepers have a responsibility to be in touch with the one who owns the palace. The gatekeepers don't have the responsibility to pick and choose who is allowed in, but the gatekeeper's responsibility is merely to open to the gate as the Lord allows. Are we fulfilling our responsibility this morning? Are we opening up the gate to those who need to come in? Or are we standing in the way of sinners who desire to come in and to hear this gospel? I'm going to ask the pastor to pray for us this morning to, to allow us to examine ourselves and make sure that we are doing the job that the Lord has empowered us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Is your own on the altar of sacrifice, they your own that the spirit can You can know thee be blessed and have peace and sweet rest. As you yield him your body and soul, is your all on the altar of sacrifice? came into the authority to do everything that God had trained him and or prepared him to be. But as the preacher delivered today, the one question kept recurring in my mind. And the question is, are you authorized? 